Deontay Wilder spent the entire uh, press conference not answering questions with headphones on. It just, the whole thing was like a sideshow. I mean, you want us to tune in to see the fight, like answer the damn questions. It's like I was saying earlier with the dig in the hole. Deontay Wilder's in a hole. Someone should tell him to stop digging. He's making excuses. He's showing up acting like a jerk at the press conference. Like, you want people to tune in. Hype the fight. Tell us you're going to kill him. Do something. Don't just sit there with your headphones on. It almost just looks like he's scared. He doesn't want to address. He, he He's afraid to address maybe all the different... Uh, excuses that he's make from his I mean you think of all the excuses his suit's too heavy his he was drugged the water um, Mark Breland was out to get him um, they put something in Fury's gloves Th- he's he's made all these claims none of them have any like there's no there's nothing to substantiate any of these allegations I don't know anyway what'd you think of the press conference listen Ken everything you said is fair accurate right um First of all, Wilder doesn't have the greatest personality. Um, he's not the greatest promoter in the world. Uh, you know, like Floyd Mayweather and some of these of you, know, you go over to the UFC, which of course we're very blessed to have those fans uh, with us on the podcast and talking about the UFC and uh, you know Conor McGregor and those guys. They, you know, they all know how to promote, uh, or most of them. Some of them are better than others. McGregor's special. Mayweather was special. Muhammad Ali was special. But they they also had a special charisma. He doesn't really have that charisma. He really don't. He it's, it's sometimes hard to like like him. When he did say something like you said, come out there and say I'm going to do this. When he did at the end say that, he, he said like I'm going to decapitate him. Or he said I'm going to, uh, what did he say? It's going to be bloody and I'm going to chop his head off. I mean, uh, to me it doesn't, that I, I'd rather hear something else. Um and especially after he sat there with his headphones on, I think it's kind of like, besides being ridiculous, it's a little, well, maybe it's not ridiculous. He Maybe he's got a method and a plan for it, which I, I'll talk about in a second. But it's still a little disrespectful. Maybe not even a little. It's a lot disrespectful to the fans, to the promoters. Um, not that anyone really has to prom- uh, respect some of these guys like Aram, you know, because... They haven't always been respectful themselves, quite frankly. And again, we tell the truth here. I don't care. But um, still, you should be respectful to the sport, to the process, to the idea of a press conference, to the fans that are tuning into it. And and he, he wasn't really. He wasn't. But look, the main thing is to win. We've seen it in sports. We've seen it. We've seen it in life that if you win in the end, people kind of all, all forgive and people forget. And that's the main thing. And maybe that's all he's concentrating on. And I get it. I can see the possibility of that where uh, I could see two sides to it, where wearing the headphones was almost an admission that Fury gets into his head or has gotten into his head. It, it is, Ken. It's like he's admitting that. Um and and this is being used to keep him out of my head. Uh, he's he's renting space in my freaking head, and I'm trying to kick him out. And this is the only way I can get him, you know, from squatting in my head, from squatting in my head again. Um, so so that's part of it, for for me to put a reasonable uh, spin on it of what it could be. And I think that's reasonable. Uh, it could be both. You could also say. He doesn't want him in his head, but uh, and because he's you know concentrated solely on a fight, he doesn't want distractions. So you could also say that 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 he's just concentrated on a fight. It's all about winning, and he knows that he did get in his head uh, in the past. Maybe he's making an admission without meaning to, but this time it doesn't matter. That this is solely about the fight. I'm going to have no freaking distractions. I'm not going to... One of the strengths of Fury is the mind game. You know, his strength is that he's versatile. He can box. He moves really agile uh, in a, with a lot of... Uh, in an agile way for a big man, giant man, 6'7", 280, whatever he is. He's talking about coming in 300. I don't know if that's a good idea, but whatever. <laughs> um, you never know with Fury. But he's a, com- he's a comedian. He's a, he's a salesman. He's a promoter. But his gifts are many. He can box. He can. He showed in the last fight he could walk you down, which you know he hadn't really shown that except in a fight where he got cut. He did that, 
But other than that, he was always a boxer with Klitschko when he won the title first, the linear title. <laughs> he boxed uh, with an older Klitschko. He boxed the first time, of course, with Wilder. Then he showed, again, another dimension. He could walk to him and do that. So we understand his gifts, but part of his gifts is to also get into your head. Psychology, like Muhammad Ali used to do. Uh, so maybe like Floyd Mayweather did a little bit. Uh, so you could also give credit to Wilder. A lot of people are going to be surprised at this direction I'm going in and say that just like <laughs> if you know a guy has a good jab, you take his jab away, you slip it, or you counter with right hand to stop it. Well, if you know a guy is good psychologically at getting into your head, you take that away from him. And this was his way of taking that away from him, Ken. I give him credit for that. This is his way of saying, you know what? I'm not going to let him use that strength. He, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to let him use that ability. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block him out. So I look at it that way. Everything I look at is boxing and fighting. And I look at it that way strategically that, that's what he was doing. And I think he probably was saying, I'm not going to let him get into my freaking head. I've been susceptible, but you know what? Not this time. So so if that's why he did it, and I believe it probably is, give him credit for that. Um, he's, uh, he's thinking about the physical preparation, also the mental preparation by blocking him out. Uh, and this is how he's going to prepare by... Again, locking them out. But then the face-off, they said it was five minutes. I, I, I thought it was longer. It felt, yeah. it felt like it was longer than five minutes. I'll be honest with you. It was almost uncomfortable. But it, it felt longer. It felt a lot longer. But whatever it was, I didn't have a stopwatch on it. But um, in the end, that was telling. And I'll tell you why, Ken. They were both looking for an edge. They're both looking to win the preliminary fight, the psychological fight. You know, Fury might have, in his mind, won the first part of it by facing him, by going up there and making this guy submit to headphones, where he's basically admitting, I got I to gotta do something to get him out of my head. So in his mind, he's thinking, I got him. I, I already got him because he had to go to headphones. So, so in that way, but this was more... This was more basic. This was more traditional boxing where the face-offs is part of the tradition of boxing. And this was more tangible where you could pick a winner or loser. And I'll tell you what I, where I'm going. They stood there for all that time, whatever amount of time it was, facing off. And it's not just a traditional thing to do. It's now. It's become. It's it's part of the pre-fight stuff. It's like the first battle before the battle. There's three parts of the battle. If you're not a heavyweight, there's three parts. Even heavyweight, you gotta make weight. You gotta deal with the face-off, and then of course you gotta get in the ring. So the face-off, who blinks first? Who wins the psychological battle of making the other guy look away? And don't think that this isn't important to fighters, Ken. It's huge. It's huge. Because it's about the mental s state of how you go in a ring, how confident you are. And if you can feel that you've bullied your opponent, I'm using that name, uh, that I don't want to use that. But if you, could, if you think that you intimidated your opponent, if you think you made your opponent give in, show weakness, show a flaw, you're a little more confident going in. And that can mean a lot. That can mean a lot. And for me, with all that standing, all that staring, all the crap with the headphones before that, everything else, this was a little tangible. Because after all that time, who blinked first? Who looked away? Wilder did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it got crazy. It got uncomfortable. Even the promoters, you could hear the talking in the back. What's going on here? Who's going to break this up? Don't touch them. Who's going to break this up? When's this going to stop? Is this, are we going to miss dinner? 
because I think the uh, I think the Bob was thinking about his five o'clock martini, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I think so, maybe. And so, <laughs> you know, he, he's got to have that. And so they were getting a little nervous, like, how long is this freaking thing going to go on? And and then all of a sudden, excuse it, make excuses, do whatever you want. But it was up to the two fighters. And both camps came next to them a little bit and whatever. And who broke first? Wilder. He broke first. He did. Whatever reason, you could say whatever you... I'm telling you, I've been in this sport my whole life. It means something. Listen, it's still going to come down to who lands the punches. I get it. I get it. But the mental state is so important. Wilder blinked first. He looked away. With all the bravado and all the, the words he used, I'm going to chop his head off. I'm going to decapitate him. I'm gonna blah. Whatever words it was, I can't remember what it was. But whatever it was, at the end, Fury didn't turn away. He did. He did. That meant something to me. At the end of the day, that meant we'll see. We'll see. At the end of the day, hey, they got to get in the ring. They got to fight the freaking fight. But, um, you know, you could even hear his corner people. You could even hear Fury, if you listen to it, after he turned away and walked away, Wilder being he, you could hear Fury and his people saying, see, he ran away. He walked <laughs> away. He ran away. Yeah, so they're, and, and they're right, he did. I'm not saying he ran away, but they're right in their mind in what was going on. There was a reason nobody was buckling for, for five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever minutes it was. There was a reason nobody was buckling. And then finally somebody buckled. And they had the opportunity to say, see, you ran away. See, you walked away. See, we beat you. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. Yep. Well, that one will certainly be an entertaining fight. I'm sure everyone will be tuning in to see that. 